Hi everybody, this is Patrick Morrissey in Hyde Park. I'm really happy to be participating in the Writers in Residence reading series, and I want to thank everybody at Creative Writing and the University of Chicago for making this series happen. I'm going to read poems today, uh, mostly from a book of mine called World Music, which came out in 2017. Um, they're almost all Hyde Park poems, and then I will finish with a few uh, newer poems that are going to come out in a book called Lightbox next year. Uh, I'll start with um, poems from uh, World Music from the first section of the book, which is called Second Sleep, um, and the first poem in the section is also called Second Sleep. Second Sleep. Day breaks with the garbage truck's beep, then dissolves into fog a second sleep, cradled in diesel, the hydraulics churning at some distance, a vague dream turning over again. Lakeshore. Basso continuo, the lake rolls against boulders, slabs, glass, and stone glinting, shards of the grid sifted smooth and collectible among girders a merganser tilts its head and decamps northeastward welter sun slants on milky swells ducks calm atop a welter of shadows water knuckles across the rocks a barrel house combo falling apart Articulate. A fluent enclosure, the wrist swivels and nods, silent on its stem of bones. There might be some uh, radiator noise. I'm sorry if the mic is picking that up. Graffito. Always hungry, never guilty. Neon scrawls along concrete, the all-night tremble and hum of halogen, somebody's ghost echoes down the viaduct, a craving traced by a hand cast out. And that poem uh, was read Roberson. Bicyclist. He wobbles on his bicycle, steadies threads and S through traffic, clank of gears a chain around his person, a person around its breath. Figures. Bundles, piss bottles, bags of bread and nest inarguably composed. He writes down what he hears, guarding his stash of pages, face a rictus one minute, rolling vacant, the next, he would seem beyond us, but he is always here. She draws herself up into light. She lets fall across cheekbones, chin, chest, palms, opening out the shadow. Drops from feet to head, sun, cloud, then sun again, her eyes held still behind lids. Agitated, then matter of fact, he has a story to tell, something that happened a long time ago. His hands curl and leap, crackling syllables, maybe a sentence, then just a string of strangled names, that thing burrowed down in the dark, pushing itself up, gasping for air. At my desk again, watching a shadow, sweep the page, I mouth the words, turning them over by hand and tongue, noiselessly, I think, until your voice carries in from another room. Hey, were you saying something? Surfaces. The contrail dissipates to white cursive loops, then nothing. Flat, noiseless, no telling how far off. Out past the breakers, gravity looms up and washes under. 
after the storm. This poem is for Peter O'Leary. Pocked limestone corners, flex, detonated, lake bed, flung a field and terrace swept, clean of brush by the horizon whipped into angled fits. A little wren steals among odd synthetic neon bits, a rusted flange and someone's sandal plowed ashore, relict wares seeding sudden furrows. A maple sapling snapped, run with ribbon as if the cassette had unstrung all its songs. Transit. Winter, the bus crowded, hushed, charge rippling along the velour and plastic interior, a warm murmur out of which a voice detaches itself and rises as if to disembark. I just don't know what to do with myself. Squall. Sky like television static, familiar bricks, windows snowed out, a row of trees dissolves in the glow, bits of signal ticking at the sill. Sources. Blackbirds drop in threes from a cornice perch, shadows following sources down wash, sunlit bricks. It's late afternoon lengthening angles, some old pages torn loose, held together a moment mid-air, then drafted away, turning noiselessly to catch in trees and wires. Heat wave. Offshore haze, a membrane settled where atmosphere swaps with surface, cirrus thinning to blue, all edges feathering the depths. Windless, a list of things continuously not getting done. Janitors hosing down the sidewalks, a spider high on the wall, an early light. Felt in the room, a tape hiss, minimum ambient charge, its medium thickening with tiny shifts a tremble in the array. Sweating all night, fans whir, circulating solid air, our dreams turning fitfully through each other. Swimming. This poem is for Maria Fahey. Some voices, a laugh, traffic, murmur drifting over water's rim broken by a buoy aloft a lake bird oars itself forward tumble down rocks and pilings breadth shifting even light an edge to push off from evening news Silhouettes flicker blue in tiny rooms, evening news, voices piped in from elsewhere to witness as I do at a window, saying, now back to you. So now I'll just finish with a couple of poems, uh, newer poems from Lightbox. They're also uh, Hyde Park poems. Inaugural. Days just beginning to lengthen, tenuous angled sunlight freezes in the gutter. The lake lifts and sighs under a crust of snow, its particulate hush. Blown newsprints, shimmering info. At the city's margin, traffic, drivers and passengers warming to radios, the rush of voices, inquiries and hearings, southbound to where the skyway lofts up out of the grid, curving across service stations in a Western Union, rows of houses, rooms trembling with semis overhead, 
the news will always find you. Distant antenna, distant steeple. On the corner, kids shoot pictures of each other. Overnight, bodies become the news. Someone's always counting. Holsters, actuaries, toll collectors. Diffuse threat, a breach in the cloud. Ladies on their way to a prayer meeting. Gesture and talk, patient assembly. All the bodies, little movements. Twenty crows in the maple's crown, inaudible, then raucous, beating the air, an animal logic, at the edge of what's sensible, the investigation begins. Miniatures. The machinist works behind a screen, his torch crackling, a sudden flash glimpsed between the gaps, as if from an idyll of Rossetti's, deep eyes intent on the name of every stop of the bus scrolls past. Duffled in under the overpass, a man's blankets and heavy coat fold into a dream of comfort, held close cell phone or scratch ticket, digits flicking across synapses, possibilities, quick to the touch. Babies working out his body, all its parts, that it's his, everything connected, tiny engine of the flesh, worn out at the end of the day, a bottle in a bag, transistor, radio, tuned low, song alternates with static, the missing person waits at every corner, all his particulars, familiar eyes. Have you seen me? In other words, uh, and this poem begins with a line from the poem, poem uh, Michael O'Brien. Days vacant places, voices collecting in the corners, overlap and scatter among shifting drafts, swept and empty, every edge of the room holding an echo, its faint tremor. Impatience, little agitations of the surface, try not to take things head on, let them be brushed by their names. Last leaves against the glass. Daddy, is that the wind? Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care. This poem is called Totality. It takes place on August 21st, 2017, which was the date of the total solar eclipse that um, went across the United States. Um, and it takes place in Eureka, Missouri, at a wolf sanctuary, um, fairly close to St. Louis. Who beyond the corona's fuming magicum, in whose stunning fury powers wreathe their forces, who saw when you entered the sun's stupefying throne room, enameled in saffron and horror? The fires and gold in ingoing undulation rebellow into your nuclear self. Aroma of myrrh, the Holy Ghost groans in the abundant sense of. Despondent roars that signal the curious foreshapings of the spirit's life. The sun's foam, its thrum of force, the sun's theriomorphic lion, eternity's heliopolitan purr, its libidinal boom and pash. It was not the sun god you adored, but the material sun itself, which extending its hand of flame touched you with an eternal life belonging to the god in whom all things are made. The sun's arrogant clasp, the sun's wrathless winter heat. The sun, you read, is one foot wide, but what could cover the sun? Rage. Rage of gold in the temple of the sun, in the center of the earth where the sun is black. Dragons, migrating dragons in sun-wheeling pageants. Shadow, 
shadow and gloom from the moon's sunward side. In early afternoons, drifted in dusk, the sun, seething only crown, flares out into the fixed star's depths. Wolves. The wolves who faint at the death of the sun. You have heard the sun singing wildly, a corona of angels expanding the chorus, and you have felt the sun's power streaming from within a living dynamolysis. And you have stood in the sun's chemical theater, where you have seen the sun's horror of power, the planets and circuits absorb. And you have felt the sun's ruthless hammer of gold, and stood in the stupendous sun-clad ruins of the star, whose thatches of penumbra shade cavities of plunging hydrogen, violent in agitation and size, angelic sun gems arise from, purring with sundering powers of revelation and holocaust. The older the deity, the more terrifying the god. Worship of the sun is worship of the oldest, most formidable power, witchcraft, the sun's energetic witchcraft. In the throne room of the sun, lioned with thunder and gold, powers boom and light forms pour out rings of fire. In the solarium of the fall, lordly cranes winding up thermals, winding up thermal gyres guide loftiest currents to guttural calls fluted through their antique sinuses. In the sun's undone thrum of creation, heat and light outglory matter ebullient angels bearing their messages seethe from. In the swinging thoroughfare of the sun, jets of the father's wrath. In the soft delusion of eternity, the saffron silks of the sun. In the sun's orbital quake, Elohim's coils of torture and euphoria. In the annals of the black magic, the stars nightly blind, the sun's uneven valves of gold. In the dream of money flowing freely from one reliable source into your cupped hands, the sun's satanic sieve, its hermaphroditic mesh. In the sun's brooding bulk, endless destruction and quenchless rage. In the sun's beguiling gold, chrysolite, carbuncle, myrrh, incense, moss, amber, balsam, honey, aromatic reed, crocus, corn, aloes, cinnamon, and loose strife. In the pour of the waterman, the empowered sun spasming in throes of birth. Earth of grains, earth of fat, the sun brightly shining, its consummation. The moist black body of the heavens, the blackness that results, the shadow. The eclipsing moon's deep-eyed arousal, there is the sun. The brass of light, the grove, the open field, the wolves of the sun and von Hempel's dragons, the morning steaming, deep in August. There, above, the sun's sulfurous riot, its caustic fires, and there, invisible, the moon, adrift, its lenient salt, the cumbrous cake, white cake of it, approaching the sun's white magnesium, terraqueous men everywhere. Salamandrine men and women assembled, children of the moon, in the throbbing heat, wearing pitchy spectacles, delicately extracting snacks from boxes and bags. What land of darkness and vibrant morning light alluded to? What land of darkness to be brightened by a polarized gloam? What land of solar quakes and escharotic eruptions? What skin of a burn on the world? What satanic void arriving? Thin sun, new moon incurring, intensely polarized light, like looking through crystallized shadow. Lunuli of light pass through pinhole apertures of leaves, feathering the surface of things with their small silver scythes. Nemesis moon, sun's acetylene sliver. A minute before total eclipse, the sun's intense fuse, little more than a crescent, like the sting from a welder's torch swung in an outlining arch. Stars and planets, Jupiter first, benignant herald, a hush, insects settling down, totality. Gasps of awe encanted in euphoric disbelief, 
for two minutes and 17 seconds. Where the sun is, there is instead a great opaque throb, surrounded in brilliant silver, the sun's superheated atmospheric corona, like a great radiant exhalation. The sun every hour leaking seven billion tons of corona into space the solar winds suspire from. You can't stop looking at it, like beholding the eye of God. For a moment, a reprieve, until God unwinks and restores eternity. To stare at the sun. Please, of disoriented, unbound joy. And the wolves have all fainted. And the moon's soporific witchcraft absorbs the sun's subliming heaves. And the brass is clashed among the peoples of the Middle West, whose symbols urge the magician's incantations, the ones drawing down the moon from the heavens, and the staggering boy clutching his temples, whose migraine the eclipse has triggered, and the eclipsed sun's meteoric moonshine, its glossy Babylonian veneer, the sun, a dark, throbbing socket of terror, whose silver corona intones transplendent starlight unfringed in the eclipsing moon's deep-eyed arousal. Sun gushing, agonized light through the valves of life. Flaming wheel upheld before your torso. Five-pointed immensum of the sun. Sun whose fiery doors were closed. Angels in the silver streaming from the blind spot of the sun. Sulfurious stones of the sun lodged in the crypts of the sky's tonsils. Eclipses woven shadow. Angels weaving from feeling a mesh in the throat of your birth, an esophageal web of the sun. Go ahead, try it, to swallow all the soreness you've inherited. You can't. All these seething suns, you can't do it. You'll have to live instead. In the light of the sun that the moon attends, your imminent psychic birth transpends. You balance on symbols percussing the sea. You offer wings of fire to the sun and unloosed winds to the moon. The lions of noon have swallowed the sun, revealing the mystery kept secret for eons from eternity's tacit thrumming of time. The moon's dark side harrows in umbra at midday. It's this. You can't swallow the sun yourself. Despite the quicksilver meteors you keep in your pockets, despite the aura of transmutation as your thoughts from feelings sublime, despite jovial benisons choired down from on high, the sun is something you can't swallow yourself. Only in the moon's magnificent murk can you do it. Can you swallow the fire gushing from the sun's silvering fountain to know that it's the outer and not the inner life that the stars from the time of your birth have been showing you, but that you've failed to see all these years with the sun ablaze in the sky overhead until totality's moment of dazzle, when the moon drifted for two minutes across the eye of life and you saw all of it, the awe of it. There is no life in the sun without forgiveness, especially of Father Son himself.